Good morning, New Life. Good morning. Happy Palm Sunday to you. Good morning. Uh, and by way of announcements, Holy Week begins today <clears throat> with the start of Palm Sunday, but we also have TNT on Tuesday night. And then Good Friday service on Friday at 7 p.m. We have a special guest, uh, poet, uh, spoken word artist coming as well on Friday. And then we have two services on Sunday. One starting at 7.30, which I will be at begrudgingly. And the 10 o'clock <laughs> service, which will be, everyone will be wide, wide awake. <laughs> so those are our announcements. <clears throat> Women, do not also forget that the Women's Conference is happening at the Life um, from April 19th to April 20th. The cost is only $20. Register today. Uh, the women look forward to seeing you there. I will not be there. <laughs> and then also to look ahead, we have a spring revival during the first weekend of May. So to celebrate Palm Sunday and the beginning of Holy Week, we want to kind of do a little timeline of what's happening so everyone is well informed so that when we begin to worship today and throughout this week and you reflect, you really see all that Jesus did to prepare for his ultimate sacrifice. So are you ready to do, to do that? All right, so on Sunday, Jesus had his triumphant uh, arrival into Jerusalem on a donkey with people yelling, Hosanna and waving palms. Can you give us a little bit more about that, Pastor Fred? I sure can. Um, one of the things we have to understand is what was going on during that particular time. They thought Jesus, they didn't think that Jesus initially was the Messiah, but then I guess they got some type of um, intuition, uh, perhaps from God. And so the palm represents their victory. And if we back up 200 years prior to Jesus actually riding in on a donkey, um, there was a um, rebellion led by Mac uh, this guy named Judas Maccabus. And so uh, they overthrew the rebellion. And then one of the things that he did is he minted a coin. And on the coin, they had palms on the coin. And so what they were doing is this was an illusion going back to that time they were thinking about the victory that they had. And as they were looking at Jesus, they were looking at Jesus as the Messiah. And one of the things that they call Jesus is David. David, son of God, son of David. Amen? And so um, the other thing that they did is they put down what? They put down clothes. And so they thought Jesus was going to be this um, leader, kind of in the steps of David. But that's not why Jesus came. Jesus came so that he could die for us. So that's the reason why they laid out the palms. They had illusions back to 200 years ago where they had this rebellion. And I'm assuming that they believed that Jesus was going to um, lead them because they were actually being um, governed by the Romans. Amen. Awesome. And then shortly after, he went to the temple. I think we hear this story a lot where Jesus overturned um, the temple where there was a lot of selling, a lot of things going on. <clears throat> Can you give us a little bit about that? Yes. The temple was supposed to be a place of worship. A place of worship. So what Jesus does is he looks back at the book of um, Hosea as well as Nehemiah. And that's where he gets that quote from. You have made a house of prayer into a house of what? A house of worship to a place of what? Thief. Thieves. Amen. And so uh, Jesus became angry. He didn't sin, though, right? He became angry, and he started turning over these tables. And he would say, why would Jesus do that? Well, the place where they were doing all the trading was in the court of the Gentiles, and that's where the Gentiles um, worshipped. Amen? Because they couldn't go into the uh, temple with the Jews. And so Jesus started to turn over tables for several reasons. One, uh, when people came from far away, they didn't bring their animals. Because if they brought the animals, and if the animal broke a leg or something happened to the animal, they couldn't sacrifice the animal. So there was this big market, and they would have animals there so that people could buy animals. But they couldn't use their currency, because some of the currency had uh, foreign gods on it. And so they had to exchange, you know, how we go, if we go to Germany somewhere, if we have dollars, then we exchange it for what? Marks. And so they were doing the same thing. But the thing is, they were crooked. They were jacking up the prices. They were jacking up the prices. And so Jesus became angry, and he wanted to make a point. And then I'm going to come back to this one a little bit later. Okay. Awesome. Uh, if you're going to do business, do business with integrity, right? So then on Monday morning, Jesus wakes up, he goes in the city, and he sees the fig tree. What happened at the fig tree? All right, so the fig tree, if you all look at the Old Testament, um, some of the um, 
Old Testament refers to Jesus as, I'm sorry, not Jesus, but Israel as a palm tree. It's a symbol of Israel. And so as Jesus begins to approach this fig tree, from afar, it looked good. Looked like it was going to bear some figs. But the closer he got to it, he realized that it was barren. It was unfruitful. And so that is emblematic of uh, the nation of Israel. They looked apart. They worshiped. They participated in religious activities, but the closer you got and the more you start to examine them, they were unfruitful. They weren't what they were supposed to be. And so when we take a look at what Jesus did in the temple by turning over the um, tables and making a statement that he made, and then cursing the fig tree, that was, we could say, a prophecy of what was going to happen to Israel for their unfruitfulness. God was going to pass judgment on that nation, and that's what he did. Mm, man, so we want to bear fruit in all the things that we do, right? All right, then we, we don't have anything recorded for Tuesday, but then on Wednesday, we have him getting anointed <clears throat> um, in Bethany. So why was, why was that so important for him to be anointed in Bethany? Wow. Um, Mary, the one that anointed him, really did realize what was really happening. Jesus, we all know that he was going to bear the um, sins of the world. Jesus was probably the only one that really knew what was going to happen. And so I believe that God probably put it in their heart to anoint Jesus. And she went and she anointed Jesus for his burial. She didn't really know what she was doing, but she anointed Jesus for his burial. And then on Thursday, he was with his disciples and instituted the Lord's Supper. So we talk about that a lot on First Sunday. But can you tell us about the first Lord's Supper, if you will? Yes. And I believe we all know what that kind of represents, right? If we take a look back at the children in Israel, how God led them out from um, the bondage of, of Pharaoh. One of the last acts that God did uh, was to um, pass over um, Israel. And, and let me back up just a little bit. God, in his last plague, said that he was going to kill the firstborn of every Egyptian. Mm -hmm. And for the Israelites not to have their firstborn killed, they had to go out and what? Slaughter a lamb. They had to put the blood over the um, door mm -hmm. uh -huh, so that the angel of death could pass over. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so if we fast forward, Jesus institutes the Last Supper because he is the Passover lamb, mm -hmm. the lamb that would take away the sins of the world. And so one of the things that Jesus did is Jesus had the Passover meal. After the Passover meal, he washed the disciples' feet. And then after he washed the disciples' feet, he uh, gave them a commandment. And I may be getting a little bit ahead of myself right, here. Well, but the commandment was to love one another as uh -huh. you have loved me. By this, people will know mm -hmm. that you are my disciples. And so when we take a look at Marty Thursday, Mahdi comes from a Latin term meaning um, mandatum, which, which is to mandate. And so Christ mandated mm -hmm. that the um, disciples, including us, love one another. And see, if we take a look at that, Jesus demonstrated love. And so Jesus took love to a higher level because now the disciple had to demonstrate the type of love that Jesus demonstrated mm -hmm. to them. So then on Thursday night after the Last Supper, uh, that's where he was arrested, correct? Amen. And he was arrested and he was betrayed by who? Judas. For how much? Was it 30, 30, 30 yeah. shekels? Okay. <laughs> and so he was delivered into the hands of the Romans, correct? And so at that moment, he actually had an opportunity to almost get off, right? Like um, with Pilate, yes. but he didn't. And he was accused of things, but he never said a mumbling word because he knew that he had to be the sacrifice. So that leads us into Friday. So tell us about why we call Good Friday good if it, in fact, is the day that our Savior died. Yeah, they should probably call it Great Friday, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. Uh -huh. It was good because that was Jesus' purpose. God, if you look at John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And so when we take a look at Good Friday, that was Jesus' purpose, was to die on the cross. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about that is that it released us of our sins, past, present, and future, if 
we trust God, and if we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and when we repent of our sins. So that's why it's good, because he died for us, shed his blood for us, and now we are redeemed because of the All blood. Right. And we're going to stop there, because next Sunday we're talking about Sunday. We'll start Amen. Friday. So as we go in for Holy Week, it's a surprise, y'all. We don't know what happens on Sunday yet, right? <laughs> but that's the kind of excitement we want to have when we get to next Sunday, but fully informed excitement. We don't just want it to be an emotional response, a, a religious thing that we say we do this every year. But I would encourage you, as you go through this week, uh, read Matthew 21 through 27. Uh, it's only a couple chapters. We got several days to get through it. And if you get to the end of 27 by Friday, you'll be all caught up. And so we'll talk about it. So thank you, Pastor Fred, for this. And we're going to go to our lifeline now. Amen. Thank you all. Welcome to The Life, where we are advancing the kingdom of God by developing kingdom disciples one person at a time. I'm Ashley Russell with What You Need to Know This Week. The Life is moving to two services starting in April. Two services means more space and worship options for you and your family. Fall back or spring forward, you decide. Come early for a more traditional worship experience at 8 a.m. or come later for a contemporary style worship at 10 a.m. Just don't come at 9. Remember, new Sunday service times starting April 7th. All LIFE members are invited to the LIFE Group Bowling Kickback on April 6th at Round 1 Bowling and Amusement in Potomac Mills Mall. The cost is $22 per person and includes bowling, a slice of pizza, and a drink. LIFE Groups can form teams for some friendly competition or come out and bowl with other LIFE family attendees. The deadline to register is April 1st in your Church Center app or at the lifedc.org slash register. This month, we will celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Join in the celebration Sunday, March 24th for Palm Sunday service at 9 a.m. Tuesday, March 26th for Tuesday night teaching at 7 p.m. Friday, March 29th for Good Friday service at 7 p.m. Sunday, March 31st for our grand celebration with services at 7.30 and 10 a.m. If you just can't be in the building, be sure to join us via our live stream. All ladies are invited to the 2024 Women's Conference at the Lights. Lady Ray will host this two-day event under the theme, Do You See What God Sees? Putting on Your Holy Ghost Imagination. Friday, April 19th, features Minister Shayna Lockhart at 7 p.m. Saturday, April 20th, starts at 9 a.m. and features Pastor Kim Hammond, Elder Sonia Mayo, Elder Patricia Lowry, and Elder Dr. Sherelda Herbin. The cost for this dynamic lineup is only $20, so register today in your Church Center app or at www.thelifedc.org slash register. Be sure to stay connected in your Church Center app for more info on upcoming ministry events like these. Clean Systematic Theology class starting April 10th. And be sure to shop the Life Store for all your hope apparel. Kingdom Kids Children Church is now available each second and fourth Sunday for children ages 3 to 12 with engaging Bible lessons to help them develop a personal relationship with God. Get details and register your child for Kingdom Kids in your Church Center app. Our weekly Tuesday night teaching continues with revelation into the scriptures and practical lessons for daily life. Join us each Tuesday at 7 p.m. in person or online via Facebook, YouTube, or the live stream for interactive discussions. Be sure to download the scriptures and study notes posted each week in the Church Center app. Just join the TNT class group in your Church Center app and all the notes will be in your resources tab. To all those with a birthday this month, happy birthday. We celebrate you. Yeah. Put your game done shift yeah. now. You spit the scriptures to the sisters. Yeah. People like, man, that's you. Lost some weight, got a new hairdo. 
No, not my hair, not my shirt. 20 something years old, celebrating new birth. Man, it's your birthday, Shawty. Understand why you be the crunkers in the water. Understand why you be crazy, crazy. Should have been dead, you're alive, it's amazing. Now you better spread it, tell all your people. Jesus Christ is serving it everywhere like a visa. Braver, John, John, Shay, Shay, Lisa. Deliver what you got to the hood like a pizza. It's your birthday shower, it's your birthday shower, it's your birthday shower. I'ma help you celebrate your birthday. It's your birthday shower, 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 it's your birthday shower. I'ma help you celebrate your birthday. One two one two, now you're saving. You look like new. Many call you out of chosen few. Do you dance on the impromptu? Hey, what can I say? From ATL to the FLA. All your sins away. I had the same rearrange, feel good. Now go tell everybody in the hood. 'Cause when they take one look at you, they gon' say he can save you, save me too. You can be saved and still be hard. Ride 32s and still love ride. It's your birthday shower. 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 I'ma help you celebrate your birthday. It's your birthday shower. 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 I'ma help you celebrate your Hey, let's go get down. Party like you got a cap and gown. People jealous, they hate on you. But it's too late, so what they gon' do? Hey, it's your birthday, so the things you did, you don't do no more. He's got so many things in store, so everybody, let's hit the floor. Continue to enjoy your worship experience and stay connected with the life throughout the week. Be blessed and share with someone the joy of the new life in Jesus Christ this week. Good morning. Good morning, Life Family. This is Palm Sunday. This is the time when Jesus came and made his triumphant entry. So we need to shout for joy unto the Lord this morning. Shout for joy unto the Lord, all the earth, and worship him with sounds of joy. He is so deserving. Thank you this, for having me this morning. I'm Deacon Regina Washington, and I have the honor and privilege of reading the scripture this morning. It's coming from Matthew, the 21st, ver uh, 21st chapter, verses 6 through 11. And if you can, yes, please stand for the reading of God's word. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it reads, So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. I have read in your hearing Matthew 21, 6 through 11. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and most of all, the doers of his holy word. Amen, amen. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna on the highest. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Has he entered into your life on today? Hallelujah. That's the question we must answer. Praise the name of the Lord. Good morning, new life. Good morning, new life. Hosanna. Amen. Amen. It won't be long now. It won't be long now. Hallelujah. Well, I can't wait. Where, where, where did um, Justin go? I can't wait till next Sunday, Justin. I got to find out what's going to happen. Hallelujah. Oh, there he is. <laughs> oh, amen. Amen. And I love surprises. Oh, well, glory. I'm excited, y'all. I'm excited. This is the Super Bowl week. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the Super Bowl week. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go before the throne of grace on this morning. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord Jesus, for this day, Lord. We thank you, Father, for another opportunity that you have given us to worship and to praise your holy name. Because truly, you are worthy to be praised. You've been faithful. Hallelujah. When we've been hard-headed and stiff-necked, you've yet been faithful to us, Lord. And we're so grateful to you on today. Oh, Father, we ask you, Lord Jesus, to touch each and every one that comes through those doors on today. Father, you already know the need, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, there may be financial needs, Lord. Oh, there may be needs for healing, Lord Jesus. There may be emotional or spiritual needs, Lord. But you know. You know, Father, what we have need of, Lord. And we look to you, Lord Jesus, for you are the author and the finisher of our faith. Oh, Father, we just ask, Lord Jesus, that you prepare us for your word on today. Oh, Father, let our hearts be receptive, Lord Jesus. Oh, let your word find good ground, Lord. Oh, Father, that we may bear fruit, Lord Jesus, and we won't be like the fig tree, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, that Jesus saw on the road. Oh, Father, but that we will bear fruit. Oh, praise your holy name. Bless the speaker of the hour on today, Lord. Anoint him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet, Lord. Oh, Lord, let the words that come forth come with power and authority. Oh, let the magicians play carefully before you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us sing songs of Zion, Lord. Oh, that you and you alone may be glorified. Father, we thank you and we praise you and give you all the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 So I want to do something a little different. So if you could close your eyes with me, just let's imagine. Imagine that you're in Jerusalem over 2,000 years ago. And you see the person they've been talking about for the past three years that has healed the sick has raised a dead man, has um, appealed lepers, has completely broken all rules of society that you know we're talking to, talking to women, talking to the unclean, hanging out with the tax collectors. Do you see this Jesus? Do you see him riding in on this donkey while you thought, hmm, Old Testament scripture said that we should get a Messiah, a conquering king, but he's coming in on a donkey, not a horse, not a chariot, but a donkey. But there's something about him. There's something that's different. There's something that draws me to him. There's something that when the scripture says, I see him high and lifted up, do you imagine the throne or do you imagine the cross? Do you imagine seeing him high and lifted up above the earth, draining his blood out for your sins? So now I want you to still keep your eyes closed and think about today. You have perspective. You have the Old Testament and the New Testament. You know that Jesus was not the conquering king that they thought, but that he was the king that's able to set us free through his blood. That he's the king that through his sacrifice and through his stripes, it gives you healing, it gives you joy, it gives you deliverance, it gives you power over all death, hell, sin, and the grave. So while you don't have palms, you do have palms in your hand, but if you had, if Jesus was here one, right now, what would you offer up to him? Would you lay down your life as he laid down his life for you? Would you lay down your affections? Would you lay down the things that you want? Would you continue to seek God in this moment? So as this Palm Sunday, you can open your eyes. I want you to think now, we have these palms in our hands. They're symbolic of the praise and worship we want to give to our Father, right? But I want you to really think, when we say all hail King Jesus in the song, we know him as King Jesus. They, they were like, he might be King, he might be Lord, but we know him as King. We know him as Lord. So what is your response to the King? What is your response to the King? When a King walks in the room, what do you do? Do you bow? Do you stand up because you think that you're better than him? Or do you say, Hosanna, save a son of David? Do you say, son of David, have mercy on me? Do you say, Lord Jesus, do what only you can do? God, if you don't do another thing in this place, I'm going to worship you and your beauty. I'm going to worship you and your holiness. I'm going to worship you for how you are and who you are. But you've done more than enough. You've done more than enough and you will continue to do it. Your blood still works. It goes from everlasting to everlasting. You may have poured it out on Calvary, but it's still flowing today. And so we thank you. So as we wave our palms at this place, as we bow before the King of Kings, we know that he is the Lord. We know that he is the King. We know that he is the trumpet in Zion. He is our soon to recoming King. He is our Redeemer. And so on this Palm Sunday, we're just going to worship him. You reign forever, God. We praise you, God. 
praise your name. And we sing praises to your name, God. We give you glory today, Jesus. It belongs to you, oh God. Glory and honor belongs to you, Jesus. And we praise you. Come on, everybody. Sing the praises to our King.
mean I am to the man that was slain. We bless your name and we give you glory, Jesus. Hey, my God. We give you glory, Jesus. We are so grateful, God. We are so grateful, Jesus. You reign, God. When I think of your goodness and your mercy and your kindness, my soul cries out. Yeah, yeah, because you've been so faithful, God, and we love you and we adore you. We're grateful for your unconditional love. Come on, just meditate on the love that it took for him to sacrifice himself for us. That the God in three person became flesh and laid himself down for us. The man, the deity, whose name is above every name, laid his name down for us. Gave his whole body, gave himself for us. We are so grateful, Jesus. Come on, meditate on that. We're grateful, Jesus. Woo! Yeah, yeah, not my master. You could have come down, but you didn't, God. You stayed there for us. We are so grateful. We're grateful. We're grateful. We're grateful, King Jesus. We're grateful, King Jesus. You're beautiful and you're holy and you're amazing and your name is righteous and you laid it all down for us. You are the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you our Christ what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus Christ what a beautiful name it is Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of. Come on, sing with me. What a beautiful name it is. Yeah. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ. Father. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful name it is. And nothing compares. Nothing compares to this. Yeah. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Say it again. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ.
powerful name. What a powerful name it is. Hey, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name. It is. The name. Let's start. What a powerful name. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name. That he gave. He gave. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. What a beautiful gift he gave. What a beautiful gift yeah. he gave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we have an opportunity to give back to him. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. There are many ways that you can give on this morning. You can give online at thelifedc.org slash giving. You can text any amount to 84321. You can give at the Church Center app. Hallelujah. You can give cash app at dollar sign the life church VA or even to Zell 703-490-7155. You can even mail it in if that's your heart's desire to 12680 Darby Brook Court, Woodbridge, Virginia. However you decide to give, just remember that God gave first. He gave first. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he really didn't put a whole lot of requirements on us. He just said to give back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give back. Oh, hallelujah. So let us give on today. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Hold up that which you desire to give, that we may bless, that he may bless it, that you may give back 20, 30, 40, 60, or even a hundredfold. Not to give to get, but just to give because he gave. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord Jesus, for this opportunity that you have given us, Lord, to give back just a small portion of what you have given to us. For you gave us life, Lord, life more abundantly. And we're so grateful for you on today. Lord, we ask you to bless those, Lord Jesus, that given those that might not have had, Lord, but they may have something to give the next time it is asked. Lord, we just thank you, we praise you, and we give you all the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. We thank you for your giving on this morning. And now we have a presentation by Revelation. Give him a great amen.
Anybody came to give him praise this morning? 62%. Anybody come to give him some praise this morning? Is he worthy? For this I give you praise. For this I give you. Can you get that in your spirit just for a moment? Say that. For this I give you. For every mountain you brought me over. For every door that you've opened, for this I give you. Just for being God and God alone, for this. Come on, one more time. Just because you're good, for. Because you're worthy for this. For this I give you We praise you, almighty king yeah. Oh, come on, that's a nice pity pattern But to praise is to boast Can somebody open your mouth and declare his goodness in the room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been good. He's been real, real good. He's been real, real good. I owe you a praise. I owe you just a little bit of praise. Because when my mind was troubled, you calmed me. When my heart was troubled, you fixed me and because when my soul was lost you saved me and for this I give I give I give you praise For those of us who know we shouldn't be standing here today. For those of us who know we should have been somewhere else. Possibly in a grave, possibly in a hospital bed, possibly in an insane asylum, possibly tied up somewhere in a padded room. For those of us who are grateful. Can you just open that mouth one more time and shout a praise to the King? Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. We lift you up. We give you, we give you our praise, oh God. Come on, if you know it's due unto him and nobody else, put those hands together. And bless the name of the Lord. I know we got to move, but there's a... The Spirit of the Lord is here. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. In other words, there's freedom. And let's just go ahead and jump into the message. Somebody just shout out, I'm tied to triumph. I'm tied to triumph. I know you may be looking like, what? 
Where are we going with this? All right, we know it's Palm Sunday. We got the palms. We understand the praise. We know there's a donkey involved in the story. So Todd, all right, he's probably talking about the donkey. Yeah, I'm talking about the donkey, of course. But triumph, we know it's Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And we know that there's a group of people who are shouting and proclaiming his praises. I'm going to jump all the way to the end of the sermon, if you don't mind. Because what I see here is a group in, on one accord, mother. I see us lifting up the name of Jesus. I see us declaring how great he is. I see us waving our palms, but two quick extra points. Oftentimes, churches now don't, don't give out palms on Palm Sunday. Fiscally, it doesn't make sense because typically at the end of service, the ushers and security are picking up half the palms out of the pews and out of the parking lot. But turn to somebody and tell them, I'm not going to drop my praise. Anybody going to take your praise with you? I'm not going to drop my praise. I'm not going to leave my praise here. I'm, I'm going to take my praise with me when I walk out of here today. I'm going to take my praise with me. When I'm in the streets, I'm going to take my praise with me in my office this week. I'm, I'm going to take it with me to my doctor's appointment. I'm, I'm going to take it with me when I got to visit my family that don't mess with me like that. I'm, I'm going to take my praise. I'm going to take my praise with me. I'm going to. Extra point number two. There were two crowds that were with Jesus. And I just totally messed up my sermon. It's, it's all right, though. It's all right. God's doing something. He's doing something. Because there were two different crowds. There was the crowd that was following Jesus. Right? They've seen him work miracles. They've seen him open the eyes of the blind. They've seen him cure the lame. They've seen him raise Lazarus specifically from the dead. And all those who were questioning, who is this man and what is he doing? They're now following him, a great multitude, into Jerusalem. And they are proclaiming, Hosanna. Hosanna and they're blessing God but there's a second crowd that now joins in these are the people that are in Jerusalem who are now seeing this great multitude come down from the Mount of Olives coming down into Jerusalem and they're going who 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 is this you say he's who he's Jesus oh he's the Messiah oh he's the one that's going to deliver us from Rome He's the one that's going to deliver us from these centurions that are standing around and got us on lockdown. And it's going to be political change because the best politician we could ever ask for is here. They were looking for a political change. They were looking for a, a move in one way. But how many know God came to move in a different way? Now, although they were cheering and, and promoting him in the beginning, when they found out he didn't come to remove Rome, but what he came to was remove the stain of sin that was upon them. And they didn't get it. Those same people later on were crying, crucify him. Crucify him. How could we dare go from praising him to questioning him to condemning him? How many are in crowd one? How many are in crowd two? I dare to be in the first crowd because I've seen what he's done. I've seen him heal you. I've seen him heal you. I've seen him deliver you. I've seen him bless you and I've seen him work in your life. So when I stand up here this morning, I lose my mind personally. Just know my crowd one mentality has kicked in and I can't help but give God some glory because I know who he is, I know what he does, so I'll bless him. First giving honor to God, who is the head of my life. Woo! Look. Can I, can I let y'all in on a little something? Something that has blessed me over the last six months or so. <laughs> Pull back the, the veil just a tiny bit. 
when it's time to come in and preach your sermon, you go into the, the pastor's office and the elders come in, they pray with you. It's a good prayer. It's an amazing prayer. It's a wonderful prayer. It's a, a calming prayer that as a preacher you need. Right? But I've been blessed just about every time I preach for about the last three, four times, I get a side conversation with Pastor Kim. Some of y'all probably saw us over in that corner cutting up this morning. We were preaching this sermon back and forth to each other this morning already. Somebody shout, I'm tied to triumph. Come on, say it one more time and get it in your spirit. I'm tied to triumph. Ah, in other words, I'm tied to victory. Ah, I'm tied to victory. I'm tied to victory. I'm tied to victory. I am tied. I'm connected to victory. Woo. I'm tired. I'm tired. Huh. As Pastor Ra uh, Lady Rachel would say, I'm tired to that thing. Woo. All right, let me calm down. Woo. I got to call. I got to. I'm tired. I'm tired. I, I can't shake it. I can't let. It won't let me go. I'm tired to triumph. I'm tired to triumph. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. Come on, give honor to uh, our bishop in his absence and our wonderful lady O joining us this morning. I know God's going to move in this house today because she and I are on one accord. She got the color scheme memo. We are in the same color family this morning. We bless God for them. Didn't we enjoy Bishop last week? Woo! I tell you, it's, it's hard to stand the week after Bishop been here. We proclaim the word of the Lord. Somebody put your hands together. And let's bless the Lord for the angels of this house. Pastor Ron and Lady Rachel in their absence. I promise you, even though they may not be in the house, I promise you they're serving in a capacity. If you don't see them, it's because they're serving remotely. I promise you that. And with you would, would you please, I'm going to try and abbreviate it this morning so we can jump into the word. My 35 minutes are down to 27. Would you bless the Lord for my mini congregation, my beautiful first lady, my baby doll, Carmen Monique. And we bless the Lord for our congregation of three, Michael Olivia, Jalen Kenneth, and Selah Marie Porter. We bless God for them. If you would, turn with me in your Bibles to a familiar text, a text that's already been partially read this morning. If we turn to the, the Gospel of Matthew, the 21st chapter, we'll be reading from the 1st through the ninth verses in the New King James Version. This is no doubt a familiar passage of Scripture. We pray that the Lord will unveil, reveal something new, fresh, and additional to us on this morning. <clears throat> if you have it, say amen. amen. Let me adjust my screen to a size that I can read. And the word of God says, now when they drew near Jerusalem, this is Jesus, his disciples, and the multitude. Now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village opposite you. And immediately you will find a donkey tied, somebody say tied, tied, and a colt, don't forget the colt, with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall see, say, the Lord has need of them. Mm. One more time. The Lord has need of them them and immediately he will send them all this was all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying this is the prophet Zac uh, uh, 
Zechariah in uh, chapter 9, verse 9. Tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him, Jesus, on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitude who went before and those who followed cried out saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father, we thank you for this day, for this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice. We will continue to rejoice and be glad. Father, we thank you for this moment. Father, we pray that your word comes with clarity. We pray that you release revelation, knowledge, and understanding in this moment, and that we'll be changed, and that your name will be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And as you take your seats one more time, somebody shout, I'm tied to triumph. So now that I've already given half the sermon, <laughs> let's jump into a couple of points of, of interest for the next 24 minutes. The donkey and the colt, I want to just jump right there. How many times have you read the scripture and jumped from the fact that they said the donkey and just jumped over the colt? The donkey and the colt. For those of us who are raised in the country, we might have a little knowledge of what a colt is, but I did the research for you if you were raised in an urban setting. <laughs> a colt or a foal is a young animal. It's typically under four years of age. Right? So it's young. It's, it's immature. It ain't been through much yet. But probably the biggest factor in this that as a, a beast of burden, as an animal that's to be used in a domestic setting, this animal has yet to be tamed. A colt has yet to be tamed. It's yet to have been domesticated. Now let's back up and let's just look at the donkey as a whole, right? Under the Le Levitical law, uh, the donkey is considered unclean. A donkey has a cloven hoof. It doesn't have a fork hook. It has a cloven hoof. And it doesn't chew the cud. All right, those of us who, who were in training camp and youth Bible study over the last two, three uh, weeks, we've talked about unclean. To be unclean, that hoof, and, and they don't chew the cud. What is the cud? The cud basically is um, an animal that has a multi-chambered stomach or digestive system, right? So, so ladies, don't get grossed out, and, and fellas, stay with me. That means they chew their food more than one time. They, 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 they get a lump of grass or whatever they're eating, and they're going to swallow it, and it's going to work its way on down into one stomach, work its way into another stomach, and then it hits the reverse button, and it comes back up. Mmm. Chew the cud. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. So this unclean, non-cud chewing, Cloven hoofed animal that has uh, the, the, the reputation of being stubborn. Typically, when we talk about a donkey, that's, that's where we're going to hop on that right there. He's stubborn. Can't make them do nothing they don't want to do. Sounds like some of us. But there's some other characteristics of, of the donkey that I, I think we could admire. You see, Donkeys, they are intelligent. And believe it or not, donkeys are actually very sociable. All right, you don't believe it. Some of y'all are probably scrolling through Instagram or Facebook right now. Go ahead and, and search uh, famous donkeys. There's, there's, there's a bunch of donkeys right now on social media that are getting a bunch of love. Why? Because you see their personality. See, donkeys can be very loyal to their master. Donkey, donkeys have personality. There's a, a couple of, of uh, videos I probably have saved. I, I like playlists, 
right? And so I have LOL playlists on, on a couple of social media platforms. And when I need a good laugh, I like to laugh. I go to my LOL playlist and there's, there's one uh, where uh, uh, there's a donkey standing at an electric fence and there's a dog testing the wire. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. There's something in here. And the donkey is standing there looking. <laughs> and the dog touches the wire and, yip, wah, 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 and runs off. And the donkey turns his head to the side and goes, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> The biggest laugh you have ever, I mean, his eyes are squinting. He is smiling with his eyes. The donkey has personality. And the doll, donkey is loyal to, to his master. But he's unclean. He's considered dirty. He's considered a beast of burden. The donkey is also... <laughs> There's another video I got saved in my list. There are a bunch of, of farm animals leaving a, a stockyard or, or an infenced area. And they're all trying to jump over the fence. And it's a very rickety makeshift fence, Andre. You didn't build it. <laughs> like if you touch it, it'll knock over. But but. They've been trained that this thing is here to hinder me and keep me in, so they're trying to jump over it. And the donkey's at the very back, and he walks up, he assesses the situation, he reaches down, and he bites the lower bar and moves it out the way and walks on out <laughs> of the stockyard. Donkeys have intelligence. And here we find in this passage of scripture that, that Jesus has directed two disciples to go and get this complex creature, this dirty, smart, sociably kind of cool, but stubborn when he wants to be creature. How many of us can look in the mirror real quick for about two seconds and realize we're some smart, sociable, unclean, half of y'all ain't going to go with me there, some unclean sometimes stubborn folk that God actually wants to use. Can I get two or three people that would raise their hand and say you can somewhat identify with the donkey? Woo. Point number one. He knows where you are. He knows where you are. He knows Jesus knows exactly where the donkey is. This is, I believe, the only account where, where Jesus uh, openly promotes himself. He's setting up an open demonstration. And he tells the disciples to go and get the donkey and the colt. Oh, could it be that God not only wants to use the mature... And seasoned saint. But he wants to use the less seasoned saints. Could it be that he wants the two in tandem? Side by side? Could it be that he wants to use the maturity of the older donkey? The understanding and wisdom with the youth and zeal of the younger, untamed donkey. Sorry, I'm calling y'all a donkey today. Because it works to suit his purpose. And we know that the donkey is tied. He's already instructed them that the donkey would be tied there. And, and the more I look at it and the more I think about it, why is the donkey tied? It didn't say the donkey was tied. It actually said the colt was tied. Why was the colt tied? Well, in order to domesticate some animals, it becomes necessary to tie them up. Being tied means that your range is limited. I want to go. I can't. I would like. I can't. I can't go play with Mario. No, I can't. And we're tied to some things. How many of us have found ourselves tied to some relationships? 
How many of us have found ourselves tied to some circumstances and some situations? How many of us have found ourselves tied to some habits? You don't have to call it out. How many of us have found ourselves tied to some traditions? Tied to some things that were spoken about us in our past. And every time you try to move, you can't quite get away. So you're limited in your range. And I had this, this, this vision in my Holy Ghost imagination that the enemy has tied some of us to some things for far too long. And I believe the word of the Lord is coming today to help release us from some of those things we've been tied to. Whether it's tied to some stinking thinking based on what happened to you in your past or tied to that guy that just calls at the right time or texts at the right moment. I believe the blood of Jesus was shed to release us on today. Tied to that job. But if I know that he's my provision, <laughs> I'm loosed. Tied to that relationship because it empowers me and it makes me feel good. But when I realize that I'm beautifully and wonderfully made and that I was made in his image, I don't need the poking and prodding of anyone else to get me in the right mind. Tied to some stuff that has caused us to be domesticated for the enemy's purpose. In other words, we're easily used and manipulated by him because we're tied to some things. But how many know that Jesus knows exactly where we are? He knows we're jacked up. I'm sorry. Thank you, Keisha. He knows we're jacked up. He knows we're messed up from the floor up. He knows we've got some proclivities, Duran, that tend to lean us into the opposite direction of the will of Christ. But I'm so glad. That he shed his blood that would cover me in my imperfections so that I can have access back to the Father and to be used. Tied. We've been tied to some things. Tied to some things that, that aren't good for us and tied to some things that aren't right for us. But we've become domesticated and used to them. And he came to loose us. But here's the Here's the challenge. When you're loosed, will you cling to your past or will you be led into your purpose? Will we cling to our past or will we be led into our purpose? Oh, you know, if I can get about two or three saved folk who'll admit, yes, I received the Lord as my, my personal savior. I went down in the water and got baptized real good. And about two, three months later, I found myself going, kind of want to backslide into some things I used to do but I'm so glad that I was tied to him and every time I tried to ah, I felt a nudging and a pulling saying uh 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 son you're mine because see when you are tied to him you have victory over those things that used to have you bound somebody shout tied to triumph Point number two, he needs you. In verse three, we see that it proclaims that the Lord said, and if anyone says anything to you, you shall say the Lord has need of them. That's you. Need of them, them, both of them, the donkey and the colt, both of them, the old and the young has need of them has need he has need of you i don't care what your age is he still has need of no 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 the time isn't too far spent there aren't too many gray hairs on your head he has need of you no you're not too young it isn't that you don't know enough you haven't lived enough he still has need of you right where you are right where you are in the condition that you're in Here's the challenging part, and Pastor Kim, you might have to come pull me off the stage if they start to turn on me here. But he wants to use you even though you might have been somewhere else last night. That if everyone else knew you were there, it would begin to frown. He still wants to use you. He, 
even though you said a couple things on 95 this week that would make others blush, he, he still wants to you even though last night you had some thoughts about some things that if they were put on a video screen right now the people would run away from you he still wants to i talk to myself even though you used to do some stupid stuff and go some places you knew you shouldn't have been he still wants to use you even though sometimes you doubt yourself and even though sometimes you're questioning what you're doing he he still wants to use you and even though sometimes it feels like everything is topsy-turvy and who would listen to you and who would use you as an example, he still wants to use you. Still, still wants to. Why? Why would he want to use me? Why would he want to use old unclean halfway me? Well, Victor, that Bible you got open, hold it up. Victor want to make sure everybody know he got a real Bible. That Bible you got right there is full of jacked up people. Drunks like Noah. And liars like Abraham. And adulterous murderers like David. But wait a minute. We quote those folks. What? Wait a minute. We, we, we quote them folks. We quote David. We sing his songs. I will dance like David danced. What? Lying, adulterous, murdering David? If he could use David, he could use you. He has need. He has need of you. See, see, uh, the pre-sermon with me and Pastor Kim over in the corner is that huh, he doesn't call the qualified. He, he, it is warm. He, he doesn't call the qualified. But I'm so glad he qualifies the call. <laughs> he doesn't call you when you got it all together and, and everything is ship shaping. You're standing tall and you can be uh, the prime example of what a, a believer looks like. But he calls you when you're still a little jacked up and you got a little limp to you. And you got a little weeble in your wobble and you got a little something that ain't quite all together. Because he wants to use you in a way that when it's all said and done, he gets the glory. See, if, 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 if he called the biggest, the baddest, the tallest, the strongest, the wisest, the most sensible, those who could quote a thousand scriptures with no problem, not me, then they could take credit themselves. But when he gives you something in front of you that is so monumental, you feel like a gnat in front of a boulder. And you say, God, how in the world am I supposed to do that? open a business i have a ged council council married folk I, i've been divorced twice <laughs> speak speak to youth my children hardly talk to me <laughs> minister to men i'm i'm five foot three and and 120 pounds you want me to minister to women? I've got two children out of wedlock, two baby daddies. But that's exactly the type of person he, he wants to use. He wants to turn that thing that you think disqualifies you into the thing that makes you uniquely purposed. Uniquely fit to be used by him. Now the only problem is sometimes we have a challenge in allowing ourselves to be tied to him and used by him to be untied for the donkey now must be an interesting experience well, well, well. as a young donkey he's probably been here for a little minute they're trying to get him broken Only a <laughs> and now he finds himself being led away this this stubborn 
beast of burden now being taken away to be used for another purpose oh could it be that god wants to reap it's all right let him cry let him cry there's a purpose in it it's all right baby could it be that god wants to realign your purpose and where you thought you were only limited to so far he wants to take you far off into another place into a whole nother realm and do a whole nother thing that you didn't even have in your imagination could we all have, allow ourselves to be open to the possibility that God wants to use us way over here where we had no idea even existed when we look at how the donkey was led away how was it led away the same rope that had it tied to the pole is now the same rope that's being used to lead it and when we say we're tied to triumph the donkey ends up in the hands of the master and now that same rope that was tied to that pole is now tied to the king of glory anybody glad that you've been released from that thing that had your burden and you're now tied to the king of kings the lord of lords the one that has it all in control but before before the king could sit on the the colt the younger donkey the word says that the disciples placed their cloaks their clothes on the donkeys on both could it be we find ourselves in this house and we're being prepared by the word of God. We're being covered in the word. We're being prepared in the word. That's why our wonderful pastor uh, put on the Bible bowl that the, the, the ladies and gentlemen went at. And it turned out to be a tie for a reason. Because both needed to be covered in the word. The Lord knew both needed to be covered in the word so we can be fit for the master's use anybody want to be fit for the master's use covered by the word three minutes how did that happen my god my god my god somebody shout tied to triumph somebody shout he knows where you are somebody shout he needs you mario let's get ready number three the choice is yours. The choice is yours. The choice is yours whether to let go of that past thing and allow yourself to be used for purpose. I know we have a wonderful ministry here. I want to say this the right way, Lord. Download's coming. Hold on. And he wants to use us. But he wants to use more than just the same people over and over. I will probably get in trouble for this, but ah, got the mic in my hand. Every time Pastor Jones or someone says my name while they're standing up here, I cringe. And Pastor Fred, I've come to accept my calling. I've come to accept my serve. But I'm ready for some other names to be called. And I believe today God wants to reveal to some of us that he's been calling all along. Because he loosed you a while ago, but you've still been standing in the same place doing the same thing. Just kind of chilling and hanging out. But I believe the time has come and in order for this ministry to move forward into its total purpose that some of us got to move beyond our domesticated zones. Some of us have to step out into some areas that we weren't prepared to go into because we weren't qualified, but we've been called. There's some places that God wants to take you and you and you. There's some ministries in here that are just incubating inside of us 
that God wants to turn loose. Somebody in here needs to lift that hand and recognize, yes, yes, yes. I, I, I realize there's something that's been brewing inside of me. There's something that's been stirring inside of me. Well, I want to declare today in this house that you are loosed for purpose. Uh, not loose to be a wild donkey running all over the place, but loosed to be prepared for that cloak to be placed upon you, loosed to be used for the master's service. Loosed. Now, the choice is yours. The choice is yours to be used or not to be used. The second choice, we already preempted. And now that my time is gone, we'll activate. The choice is yours. Will you be in the crowd that praises him because you know him? Will you be in the crowd that praises him because you know what he's done? Will you be in the crowd that can praise him because you know the power of his word, the power of his promise, and the power in the blood that he shed? Will you be in the crowd that will praise him and declare his wonderful works in all the earth? Or will you be in the crowd that praises him for the thing that you want? Oh, the things that we want. Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll praise him when the, when the prophet says, I see a... Someone uh, in this room giving God glory because there's a new car uh, in, a, in a car lot waiting for you this week. Woo! woo. <laughs> or, or are you ready to receive the prophecy of there's someone in this house who has the burden of being an evangelist. And you'll go into the highways and the byways and preach the word of God. Or will you rejoice because he has some suffering for you to go through? But they're light afflictions based on the glory that will be revealed. Will, will you rejoice knowing that he has sickness, infirmity in your path? But it's there because on the other side, he'll get the glory. Will you rejoice knowing that he has family relational drama in your future? But it's there because there's a drawing that will take place when the reconciliation happens. Will you praise him in advance knowing that you don't know? I'm rapping. Will you praise him in advance knowing that you don't know will you praise him in advance knowing that you don't know we don't know the end from the beginning but he does we don't know the end from the beginning but he does now if i can get about three or four people who'll stand on their feet and loose their hands and open their mouths and declare whether i've seen you do it or i believe you'll do it i'll praise you anyway Can I get about four or five more people who declare that I know your works, but even when I can't trace your hand in my life, I'll praise you. Can I get about two or three people who declare that although it looks like it's dark and gloomy, although it looks like the sun isn't shining, Still, I know that you reign on high, and still I praise you. Can I get one or two people who say, I've seen you do it before. I'll trust you'll do it again. One more time. I've seen you do it before. I trust you'll do it again. I've seen you heal before. I believe you'll heal again. I've seen you open doors before. I believe you'll open them again. For that I'll praise you. For that I'll glorify you. Somebody shout one more time. I'm tied to triumph. Woo. Tied. I'm tied to it. I can't shake it off of me. <laughs> 
I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being personal for a moment, but, but there's, there's, there's something about being in the will of God. That when you're in his will, victories just come. I didn't say there weren't other challenges, but victories, Renee, they just, they just. Lady O, I tried to write a song a few years ago called Sweatless Victories. But I couldn't put it all into words. What it really meant to me. Sweatless victories. There's some things that we have in this life we didn't contend for. We didn't strive for. We didn't work hard for. That God just placed in our path because we're tied to him. We're just tied to triumph. We're tied to victory. But someone in this room today, that may not be your full story. If you're in this house today and you're going, preacher, I, I hear what you're saying, but I, I, I think I'm still that one that's, that's tied to some things. There's still some things, there's something in my mind right now that has me a little shaky even about the words that you're saying right now because... I, I, I tried not going to the website and looking at that stuff. I, 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 I tried to go past the store and not go in and, and, and buy that thing. And, and I, I seen a text from her come around 1.30 and I, I tried not to go, but I found myself on the road. And, and it keeps happening and there are cycles in my life that I don't understand and I want to break them, but I don't know how and if that's you I welcome you to this altar this morning because our God sent his only son he so loved this world that he sent his only begotten son that this world would be saved he sent him not to condemn the world but through him we could be saved if there's one this morning that says, I want to be let loose, I want to be untied from the things that have been holding me back, and I want to be tied to triumph, I want to be tied to victory, I want liberty so I can move forward, will there be one? Hallelujah. 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 Loose, 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 loose. I want to be tied to you, joined to you. If there's one in here this morning who's been loosed, but you haven't walked into your full purpose. You know that God has been calling, pulling, tugging at you. Come this morning to be used. Father, I want to be fully used by you. I'm ready to step out. I'm ready to be used by you. If that's you this morning, come. I want to be used by you. Used by you. He wants it all, he wants it all. God wants it all, yeah. He wants it all, yeah. Father, we thank you for those who have come. We thank you, Father, for number one, sending your son. We thank you, Father for the work that he did on the cross for us. We thank you for the shedding of his blood, for the remission of our sins. 
we thank you father that that blood that covers us will wash us white as snow we thank you father for cleaning us up and and making us fit for the master's use so this morning father we come and we lay down those things that have hindered us those things that have held us back those things that have been an obstacle to us realizing our full purpose in you father we declare right now that we allow you to lead us take the reins O oh god and move us into our purpose father we want you to prepare us we want you to cover us we want you to allow your holy spirit to reign in us and father then we want you to have your seat we want you to take the lead so that we may follow your direction and your way father loose us for your purpose on this morning father we declare that we will continue to praise you when we can see it and when we can't we'll continue to glorify you when we understand it and when we don't we'll continue to magnify you and to glorify your name father for you and you alone are worthy we bless you we glorify you we loose those hands we open that mouth and we begin to praise you we loose those hands we open that mouth and we praise you we loose those hands we open that mouth and we praise you. hallelujah Don't, don't stop praying just because I came up here. Continue to pray. 
because I, I feel that there's some people that are still in here that should have been up here this morning because you, you're still tied to some things that God is trying to loose you from. And I know that is true because this morning I didn't want to come up here because I'm still having problems with my ankle and that's pride. And so God spoke to me over there in the name of Jesus. And he told me that you're already healed. I'm just going through the motion of what it is. I didn't want to come up here before you limping. And God said, that's pride. And so I hear the Lord. And it, it was pride. I just didn't want to be before you limping, but I know that I'm already healed. I know that, that I'm here. I'm just, I just got to go through whatever this is, but I'm already healed. And I'm saying that because if there's somebody else in here, your pride is keeping you from coming forward so that you can be loosed in the name of Jesus. Listen, if you don't want to come up here, just meet an elder in the back. We have elders and pastors that are here because we want everybody free and free indeed so that you can worship God. Hallelujah. That you can worship God and be free from that thing that the enemy is trying to keep you bound in. Amen. So let's be free today. We bind up the spirit of pride in the name of Jesus. And I'm starting with myself to bind it up in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Because you're going to see this, this ankle healed, the manifestation of it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so God, oh my God, Minister C.D., Elder C.D. Porter, my God, my God, my God, what a word. What a word, trial to triumph. Woo. Jesus, listen, raise your palm right now and say, tied to triumph. It don't matter what trials you may have, you will have victory in the name of, you will be triumphant because Jesus reigns, amen? Not because of you but because of him and all of his glory. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, just a few notes. Don't forget that the Life Group will be having their bowling kickback on Saturday, April 6th, starting at 2.15. And you do need to register. The registration will end on April 1st. So come on, folks. Come on, Life Families. Let's get out there and register. Um, don't forget the women's conference. Woohoo! Got some dynamite speakers here in the house. Pastor Joe said everything is in the house. Amen. We got some mighty women of God that's going to bring the word. Amen. So if you're a woman, can I hear my sisters roar? All right now. Now I need you to register along with that roar. Amen? So don't forget. And listen, those of you out in the community, tell somebody else about our um, women's conference. Amen? We want the house packed out in Jesus' name. Don't forget we have Resurrection Sunday on March 31st and a Good Friday service on March 29th at 7 p.m. Amen? Amen, amen. Listen, don't forget today is Palm Sunday. It's not just another day. This is the beginning, the beginning of our Lord and Savior entering in to fulfill his obedience. Remember, he went on the road to obedience, the road of obedience to go to the cross. Amen. So when, when you take your palm home, as they said, don't leave it in the seats. Take your praise with you. And this week, every time you look at that palm, remember what he did for you. 
that he was obedient. He went on the road of obedience for what his father had called for him to do. Amen. 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 John's always on it, boy. First time visitors. Amen. Amen. Do we have any first time visitors here in the house? Welcome. First time visitor, raise your hand. Woo woo! Come on now, life. Let's welcome them. If you are a first time visitor, if you would go, yeah, Sister Sheila's in the back. You see her? My right, your left, please go. We would like to meet with you and to, um, to give you a gift from the life. Where's our first time visitor? Okay, amen, amen. Do we have anyone who is here that's been visiting with us? Amen, come on, let's welcome. Let's welcome our first time guests, amen. Amen, amen. Is there anyone that you've been here with us and you have made the decision that you would like to be a part of this family of Zion to become a member? You can also raise your hand. I don't see any hands raised, so that must mean we're all family. Woohoo! We're all family. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Well, to Lady Yo, we thank her for being here in the name of Jesus once again. And continue praying for Bishop and, and his group that's over there um, in um, Nigeria doing a mighty work praying for pastor jones and lady rachel as they're getting on the road traveling back safe traveling mercies over them in jesus name all right family ready all right let us close out all hearts and minds are on jesus let's raise our hands in this sanctuary today in unison in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and praise you. We glorify you, God, and we magnify your holy name for you alone, God, are worthy of our praise. Lord, we want to thank you. We are grateful, God, for all that you've done and what you're doing and what you're going to do. We're grateful, God, that we can participate in this holy week to worship you, to glorify glorify you and to magnify you because if it were not for you and your blood God I don't know where we would be so God let our hearts and our minds settle on you your triumphant entry in the name of Jesus towards the cross we thank you for being a living example of true obedience in the name of Jesus as to how we should be as your disciples. Now, God, we ask you in the name of Jesus to guide our hands, guide our feet, guide our hearts, Lord God, in this week as we stay consecrated to you. Reveal those things within us, God that need to be removed in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, God, for each and every family member here that you have spoken to, God, that raised their hand as receiving their call, God. Oh, my God. In the name of Jesus. And, Father, we just thank you and praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, we say amen and amen. What are we to do? And no more else. God bless to our family on virtual. God bless to you as well. Amen. Be curious this week.